Chris here from Project Option, and in this options trading strategies video, we're going to talk about a directionally neutral options trading strategy called the short strangle. Now, the short strangle consists of selling a call and put option on a stock, and in this strategy, you profit when the stock price remains within a specific range. So in this video, we're going to talk about the short strangle strategy characteristics. We're going to look at an expiration risk profile graph for the strategy, and then we're going to look at three real strangle trades to show you how the strategy performs as the stock price changes through time. So let's get started with the strategy characteristics. So selling strangles is a neutral strategy that consists of selling an out-of-the-money call and put in the same expiration cycle. Traders implement the strategy when they believe a stock will remain in a specific range. Now that's because if the stock price remains between your short strikes, between your, your short call and your short put, then as time passes, those options will decrease in value, leading to profits for your position. Now if the stock price is between your short strikes when the options expire, those options will be worthless and you'll, you'll keep the entire credit that you collected when you sold the strangle. So the maximum profit potential when selling a strangle is the credit received times 100. So if you sell a strangle for a $5 credit, your maximum profit is $500. Now, since the short strangle includes a short call option that is not covered by long stock or a long call option, there is unlimited loss potential on the upside for this strategy. Now that's because there's no limit to how much a stock can increase, and if you're short a call option, if the stock price increases indefinitely, you'll have unlimited losses in theory. Now, the break-even prices of a short strangle um, are going to be the short call strike price plus the credit you receive and the short put strike price minus the credit you receive. So that credit you receive actually widens your break-even points beyond your short call and short put strike prices. Now the estimated probability of profit for a short strangle position really depends on the short call and short put that you sell. So typically you could have a probability of profit anywhere between 50% and 99% depending on the options you sell. So the further out the options that you're selling, the higher your probability of profit will be, but you'll also have less potential reward because you're going to be selling cheaper and cheaper options. So there's a balance between the probability of profit and the amount of potential reward that you'll have for a short strangle. Now, we'll go into that a little bit more detailed in a little bit. Now, after expiration, you can have a resulting stock position if one of your options is in the money. So if your short call expires in the money, then you'll be assigned negative 100 shares of stock per short call contract, which essentially means you'll have a short stock position of 100 shares of stock per call. Now, if your short put is in the money at expiration, you'll be assigned 100 shares of stock per short put, which means you'll basically be buying 100 shares of stock at the short put's strike price if it expires in the money. Now, in regards to assignment risk, if the short call is in the money before expiration, you have the potential to be assigned negative 100 shares of stock per call contract. And if your short put is in the money before expiration, you have the potential to be assigned plus 100 shares per put contract. So if you, one of your short options is deep in the money before expiration, there is the potential to be assigned on those options. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a hypothetical short strangle position constructed from the following option chain. So at the time of these option prices, let's say the stock price is trading at $200, and we believe the stock price is going to remain between 190 and 210, so a 5% move up or down. So what we can do is we can sell a strangle on this stock. So in this example, we're going to sell the 190 put for $3.78, and we're going to sell the 210 call for $4.31, which will give us a net credit of $8.09. So based on this trade, let's go ahead and take a look at the expiration risk profile graph. All right, so as we can see, this is the risk profile graph for this short strangle at expiration. So the first thing we want to pay attention to is the middle portion of the graph, which represents where we realize maximum profit. So as I said before, if the stock price is between your short call and short put strike at expiration, both of the options that you sold will expire worthless, and you'll keep the entire credit that you received for selling the strangle. So in this example, 
we sold the 190 put and 210 call for a total credit of $8.09. Now that means in actual dollar terms, our maximum profit potential on this trade is $809. So based on this graph, we can see that if the stock price is between 190 and 210 at expiration, we will have a profit of $809 at expiration. Now, let's go ahead and look at our break-even prices. So our break-even prices are going to be the short put strike price minus the credit we received and the short call strike price plus the credit we received. So that brings our break-even prices to 181.91 and 218.09. So essentially this means that if the stock price remains between 181.91 and 218.09, we will make money on this trade. Now if the stock price is right at one of our break even prices, then that means one of our short options will be worth the the same amount that we sold the strangle for at expiration, in which case we won't make any profits or losses. Now if you look at any significant stock price decreases or increases, you'll notice that we have significant loss potential on a short strangle strategy. So in this case, if the stock price falls to 140, we'll have a loss of around $4,000 per contract. And if the stock price rises to around 260, we'll also have a loss around $4,000 $4, per contract or per, per short strangle. So what you need to keep in mind with a short strangle strategy is that while it's a very nice strategy to have because it profits when a stock price remains in a certain range, you have to keep in mind that if the stock price you know, explodes out of that range, you have significant loss potential, especially on the upside. So while a short strangle has a high probability of making money, when it loses money, it has the potential to lose a lot. So you have to have a very strict management plan for this strategy. So now that you've seen the expiration risk profile graph, let's go ahead and take a look at the option Greek exposures for a short strangle strategy to help you understand how it can profit or lose money before expiration. All right, so let's talk about delta, gamma, theta, and vega as they relate to a short strangle position. So in terms of delta, the delta really varies because you know you could structure a short strangle to be completely delta neutral or a delta near zero as you initiate it, but you can also structure a short strangle to be slightly directional. So for example, if you sell a 20 delta put and a 10 delta call, you'll actually be net long because you sold a you sold a put with a higher delta than the call you sold. So that leaves you net long deltas. So while a short strangle is generally a neutral strategy, you can definitely structure it in a directional way by selling a call or put option that has a higher delta than the opposing side. Now in regards to gamma, a short strangle position has negative gamma. Now that means that as the stock price rises, a short strangle position becomes more short. And when the stock price falls, a short strangle position becomes more long. So if the stock price keeps increasing towards your short call, you're going to get more and more bearish on your position, which means that you're going to have negative deltas. Now a negative delta means that if the stock price keeps increasing, you're going to lose more and more money as it does. So what you want to happen here is you want the stock price to remain between your short strikes and you do not want it to make a run to either direction as that will make you more and more long or more and more short and you'll lose more money if that move continues. So in regards to theta, a short strangle position has positive theta. Now that means that as the extrinsic value of options decays over time, this leads to profits for a short strangle holder. Now that's because as a strangle seller, you want the options that you sold to decrease in price. And since de options decrease in price as time passes, you have a positive theta value on your short strangle, which means that you profit from the passage of time. Now lastly, in regards to vega, a short strangle position has negative vega. Now that is because an increase in implied volatility indicates an increase in option prices which is not good for strangle sellers. So when you sell a strangle, you are selling options. And anytime you sell options, you want those option prices to decrease from the point that you sold them. So when implied volatility increases, that indicates that option prices are becoming more expensive, which naturally will lead to losses for a strangle seller. Now on the other hand, decreases in implied volatility indicate that option prices are falling, which is obviously a very good thing for strangle sellers. So when we put all these Greeks together, we learn that a short strangle position profits from the passage of time when the stock price is between the short call and short put strikes, 
and any decreases in implied volatility. Now on the other hand, a short strangle loses money if implied volatility increases or if the stock price makes an explosive move in either direction. So for a short strangle position to work out, you need the stock price to remain relatively calm and you want it to remain between your short strikes because you'll make money from the passage of time and you'll also be able to make money if implied volatility decreases. So now that you know the theory behind a short strangle position, let's go ahead and look at three real trade examples to show you how the position performs in various scenarios. So the first example we're going to look at is where a trader realizes the maximum profit potential on a short strangle position, which of course happens when the stock price is between the short call and short put strikes at expiration. So here's the setup. The initial stock price at entry is $212.44 and the initial implied volatility is 14%. Now the strike prices we're going to use are the 201 put and the 219 call that expire in 63 days. Now at the time of selling these options we'll collect a net credit of $2.58 because we'll be selling the put for $1.75 and the call for $0.83. Cents. Now our break even prices for this trade will be $2.21.58 and $1.98.42 and that just comes from the short call strike plus the credit and the short put strike minus the credit. Now our maximum profit potential in this case is the credit of $2.58 times 100 which is $258. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this position performs as time passes and the stock price changes. Alright so as we can see here on the top part of the graph we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call and short put strike prices and also the break even prices of the strategy. So as we can see here this position worked out perfectly and the stock price remained between the short call and short put strikes all the way through expiration. Now on the bottom part of the graph we can see the price of the strangle through time. So when we entered the strangle it was trading for a net credit of two dollars and fifty eight cents and as we can see the value of that strangle dwindled away as time passed and at expiration the position was worth zero dollars so for selling the strangle for two dollars and fifty eight cents since it expired worthless this would yield a profit of two hundred and fifty eight dollars per short strangle alright in this next example we're gonna look at how a short strangle performs when the stock price collapses so obviously that's not a good thing so here's the setup the initial stock price is five hundred and twenty four dollars and initial implied volatility is 26%. The short strangle strikes we're going to use are the 495 put and 555 call expiring in 39 days. Now we're going to collect a net credit of $12.55 for this position and our break even prices are going to be 482.45 on the downside and 567.55 on the upside. Now the maximum profit potential in this case is the 1255 credit times 100 which comes out to $1,255. Now as always the maximum loss potential is unlimited. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this short strangle position as the stock price decreases. Alright so again in the top part of the graph we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call and short put strike prices and we're also looking at the break even prices. Now on the bottom part of the graph we're looking at the strangles price and any corresponding profits or losses we have relative to that price. So in the top part of the graph we can see that the stock price actually remains right around $525 for you know the first week or so and then the stock price actually collapses to around $460 which is well below our short put strike price of $495. Now when that happens, we can see that the, the, straddle, or the strangles price increases to around $48. Now since we sold it for around $12, when the strangles price reached $48, we're actually sitting on a loss of $36 per short strangle, which equates to a $3,600 loss per strangle. So as I said before, a short strangle position is highly risky and has significant loss potential on the downside and the upside if the stock price makes a large move. So you really need to pay attention to you know, your, your management strategy for that position. Now in this case, fortunately the stock price rallied back up in between the short strikes and the position did expire worthless at expiration. So if you would have sold the strangle and held it to expiration, you would have made the full profit again 
but it was a very uncomfortable ride because you did have that large loss at one point when the stock price fell to around $460. So this example just really demonstrates how you really have a lot of risk when you're selling a strangle because if the stock price makes an outsized move, you're going to have a very, very painful trade. So now in this next slide, we're actually going to look at how the position delta of the short strangle changes as the stock price changes because that will help you understand what that negative gamma means. Alright, so in this graph, we're actually looking at the same thing on the top graph. So we're just looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call and short put. But on the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the position delta, which is the combined delta of the short call and short put multiplied by 100. So the, the lowest that the position delta for one strangle can be is negative 100, which represents a short stock position of 100 shares. And the most the position delta can be is plus 100, which represents a position of plus 100 shares of stock or owning 100 shares of stock. So as we can see in this example, the stock price remains relatively flat over that first week or so, but then really collapses to around $460. Now, at the same time, we can see that the position delta of the short strangle gets more and more long as the stock price is decreasing. So initially when we put the strangle on, the position delta was right around zero, which means we really didn't have any directional exposure to changes in the stock price. Now, as the stock price fell to $460, the position delta rose to about 70 plus 70. So what that means is that when the stock price was at 460 and our position delta was plus 70, that means we essentially had exposure of a long stock position of 70 shares. So if the stock price fell by $1, we would lose $70 from that directional move. And if the stock price increased by $1, we would make $70 from that directional move. So this just really shows that if the stock price decreases significantly, a short strangle position will become more and more long, which means that if the stock price continues to decrease, you're going to lose more and more money from that directional movement. So while a short strangle starts directionally neutral in most cases, it can definitely become a very directional position. All right, so in this last position, we're going to look at a partially profitable strangle, which basically means that the stock price expires beyond one of the short strikes, but not enough to make the trade unprofitable. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 108.29, and we're going to sell the 103.111 strangle expiring in 44 days. Now for this position, we're going to collect a credit of $3.22, and that's going to bring our break-even prices to... 99.78 on the downside and 114.22 on the upside. So a pretty wide range there. So our maximum profit potential is going to be the credit of $3.22 times 100, which comes out to $322. Now, as always, our maximum loss potential is unlimited. All right, so in the top part of this graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call, short put, and the break evens of the strategy. So as we can see here, the stock price falls from its initial entry price of 108.29, and at expiration, it is between the short put strike price of 103 and the lower break even of 99.78. So since this op since the short put is in the money at expiration, that means that the short put expires with intrinsic value, which means we don't make full profit on this trade. To make full profit on a short strangle, you need both options to expire completely out of the money. And in this case, the short put expires just slightly in the money. However, since, this, since the stock price is still above the lower break-even price of 99.78, the trade is still profitable. So in this case, the short put has a value of about $1.50 at expiration. And as we can see there, the short strangle at expiration is worth about $1.50. So that makes sense. So since we sold the position for $3.22 and at expiration it was only worth $1.50, then in this case we would have a profit of $1.72 or $172 per short strangle position. Now since the short put expired in the money, keep in mind that if you held that position through expiration and you did not close the short put, you would be assigned 100 shares of stock per short put contract. So Whenever you have an in-the-money short option at expiration, you need to close that option before expiration if you do not want a stock position. 
All right, so let's go ahead and recap the main concepts that you've learned from this video. So first and foremost, selling strangles is a directionally neutral strategy that consists of selling an out-of-the-money call and put in the same expiration cycle. Now, while it's typically entered as a directionally neutral trade, recall that we did mention that you can structure it in a directional manner, but most of the time it will be a directionally neutral position. Now, the main profit drivers of the short strangle strategy are the passage of time because the position has positive theta and decreases in implied volatility because the position has negative vega. Now, to close a short strangle before expiration, you can just buy back the short call and short put at their current prices to lock in profits or losses on the position. So, if the stock price explodes in either direction and you don't want to you know, you don't want to deal with that risk and you want to close the position for a loss, you can just buy back the strangle. On the other hand, if the strangle decays in price and say it's worth, you know, 50% of what you sold it for and you want to lock in those profits, you can just go ahead and buy that strangle back before expiration and you'll successfully lock in your profits. Now, due to having significant loss potential and limited profit potential, the short strangle strategy has a high probability of profit. So just keep in mind that even though it has a high probability of profit, that stems from the fact that it has a limited profit potential and theoretically unlimited loss potential. Now though the strategy begins delta neutral most of the time, the position will become very directional if the stock price trends in one direction. Now that's because the strategy consists of a short call and short put, and it also has negative gamma. So as the stock price increases, the short strangle position will become more bearish because it'll have negative deltas. And if the stock price decreases, the short strangle position will get more long because it'll have positive deltas. So keep in mind that even though it is a directionally neutral trade, as the stock price changes, it will become directional. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel as you'll receive all of our new YouTube content as we release it.